Welcome once again. In this session, we are reading John chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. Jesus miraculously feeds 5,000. Verse 1. After these things, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is also called the Sea of Tiberias. A great multitude followed him, because they saw his signs which he did on those who were sick. Jesus went up into the mountain, and he sat there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. In other words, it was near. Jesus, therefore, lifting up his eyes and seeing that a great multitude was coming to him, said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread that these may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Now, Jesus does test people from time to time. And I know that some of you who are listening, you're probably saying, Oh, yeah, I've been tested by the Lord. And so, yeah, I mean, do not faint when the Lord tests you. Don't get weak. You know, sometimes the Lord would test you through many different ways, but he does, he does that to his beloved disciples. So that's nothing new. Verse 7, Philip answered him, 200 denarii, and a denarius was a silver coin worth about a day's wages for uh, agricultural labor. So 200 denarii would be between six and seven months pay. Worth of bread is not sufficient for them for that every one of them may receive a little. So Philip replied Jesus here saying, listen, if you were to work about six or seven months to buy the food that these people need, it, it, would, it would not be sufficient. Verse 8, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are these among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in that place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. Now, notice that all Jesus was looking for is just something to work, work with, okay? Just a little bit of something. Like he, 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 he was looking for something to multiply. He was looking for something to start out with. He was looking for a seed. So there was a boy there that had five barley loaves and two fish. And that's all that Jesus needed to be, uh, to be optimistic and just say, okay, have the people sit down, okay? Now, another thing you should notice as well is that it says there were 5,000 men. Now, most times, if not almost all the time in the scriptures, when it numbers people, it only counts the men, okay? There could have been women and children there that were not counted. So there could have been a whole lot more than 5,000. You think about it, if someone works for six or seven months, how much food could you buy in that period of time? Like half a year's or more than half a year's wages. How much food could you buy? You, can, you might be able to buy enough to feed 5,000. But not in this situation because there was probably a lot more than 5,000 because they only counted the men. Remember that. Verse 11. Jesus took the loaves, and having given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to those who were sitting down, likewise also the fish as much as they desired. Again, notice here how Jesus operates. He had a hierarchy here set in place. He was the one that gave thanks and took the bread and distributed it to his disciples, and he delegated his disciples to distribute that bread or fish to the rest of the people. So you see that everything was really quite orderly here. Verse 12, when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the broken pieces which are left over, that nothing be lost. So they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with broken pieces from the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. When therefore the people saw the sign which Jesus did, they said, This is truly the prophet who comes into the world. Jesus therefore perceiving that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, withdrew again to the, to the mountain by himself. So what did they mean when they said, This is truly the prophet, the prophet that comes into the world? Now, you see, you got to understand, they were all Jewish people. They're all Jewish. 
And they all knew very well the prophecy of Moses. When Moses prophesied about the prophet that's coming after him, and he said, this prophet you should hear. Listen to him. Okay? So this is what they were talking about when they were talking about the prophet. They were referring to Moses' prophecy about the coming of Jesus. Notice here that they were just about to make Jesus king. But Jesus withdrew himself. Actually, Jesus ran away, so to speak, into the mountain so that they would not make him king. You need to understand. See, Jesus... He was going by the will of God here. He wasn't going by his own pride, his own arrogance. You know, he wasn't being public. Oh, wow, they're going to make me king now. Might as well get in on it. No, no, no. He was saying, no, I don't want this right now. This is not the will of God. So each one of us should have the same kind of attitude. You know, you read the scriptures. You know the scriptures. You know the will of God. And if there is anything else that's presented to you that looks good, Oh, it looks good. It looks like it's ready. You know, it looks like it's really good, you know, in your favor. It might be a good thing for you to turn that down if it's against the will of God. So I pray that each one of you have the wisdom to know when to accept a so-called blessing and when not to accept a so-called blessing. As you call upon him, he promises that he will show you great and mighty things and you will find him it says if you seek him with all your heart so once again as you go seek him with all your heart continue in prayer continue in meditating on his word meditating in the scriptures thanks again blessings